the business scrub. This guy makes you have to find all the recipes in order to create items like smoothies or potions that help with a ton of things in Echoes of Wisdom, such as giving you buffs, energy recovery for your sword fighter, and much more. But the big question is, what are the best recipes to make and how do we go about acquiring those items and not making mistakes like I did of just eating the ingredients in emergency situations and not using smoothies and potions like the game mentioned to be prepared? Well, there are a total of 70 recipes to create in the game using all the ingredients and drops depending on how you combine them. When you first encounter the business scrub, you'll get the quest called Recipes Please. That makes you first come up with 10 recipes that will reward you with the item called Survey Scope. This item will then enhance the drops of smoothie items from enemies and from breaking items. Then there's a second part of this quest where he asks about 20 more recipes to give you the item which is the upgraded version of the Survey Scope called the Survey Binoculars. This allows us to go around the world and easily be able to get these drops with the highest chance ever. Now there are three ways of doing this. You can run through the game at your own pace, opening up random chests and finding ingredients to give it to the business scrub, or do this trick called the amiibo ingredient spam trick. This involves you going to your settings menu and scanning three amiibo per day, which is the max you're allowed to, and then going into Nintendo Switch settings, date skipping, coming back, and doing it all over again, which happens in a really short amount of time. This will allow you to get five stacks of an ingredient or two golden eggs, and doing this over and over again will put you in a great spot where you you don't have to do anything but just do that. Now the third way of acquiring recipes is by going to the different regions to actively farm for specific materials by breaking boxes and killing specific enemies and I'm really talking about losing tons of time like even swimming around the entire Zora area for hours just to farm bubble kelp. Or you could do method 4 which is something I came up with called cave spam farming. What this is is taking advantage of game mechanics and respawns in order to get the maximum amount of materials. Materials. For example, enemy camps have enemies that drop things such as monster fangs and monster guts. If you go into a camp and kill all but one enemy, you can then enter the cave, come back, and all the other enemies you killed before will be there except the one you didn't defeat. However, if you do make the mistake of defeating all the enemies, they won't respawn until the game timer kicks in. However, another thing that does respawn with caves are pots or boxes. If you break all the boxes and get the items inside of them and then go back in the cave and do it again, this works because those boxes can be broken over and over and over and this is a great way of stocking up on certain supplies and ingredients. You can also use this method to farm things like bubble kelp by going in the water here, entering into the cave, coming out, hitting all the grass, going back in and repeating that over and over again. So cave spamming can save a bunch of time. So with all this knowledge, here is some information on where to get these certain drops if you aren't doing the whole amiibo thing. And I'll be explaining if they're a main ingredient and what they do while we're talking about them. So monster fangs and monster guts are going to be responsible for potions. You can get these from the various monsters that are found in humanoid monster camps. The whole purpose of chili peppers is to help you keep warm in cold environments. This is found by killing certain enemies like this in the Gerudo Desert. Speaking of the Gerudo Desert, you can also get chili cactuses here by simply just breaking these cactus pieces and then it pops out. There it is, chili cactus. And what the chili cactus is really meant for is to keep you safe from catching on fire since fire is basically a damage over time on you and you don't want that. Next up, Twisted Pumpkin. So the purpose of these are to help you with winding up speed, which is a whole thing involved with automations and the speed you wind them up at. And this is going to be something that happens after the mid game from Dompe Questline, which I made an entire video for. And if you want to find any Twisty Melons, these can be found in the Hebra Mountain area while you're melting ice or breaking boxes. Also, also in the Hebra Mountain area mid-game, there's this really good cave right over here that you're seeing on your screen. This cave you could spam over and over again and get a bunch of melons. Really nice. Next up are Rock Tatoes, which drop from Twi'less enemies that are going to be in the Elden Volcano if you enter this cave over here. And what they're going to be responsible for is essentially just having your climbing speed going up. It just makes you climb faster. Now the next two ingredients are going to be unlocked after the events of the Hyrule Castle and once you start this Impa questline, which is going to lead you to a whole entire horse 
thing and then you're gonna save the horse and then you're gonna go on a farm but the whole point of this is when you're on a horse and talk to this lady it's going to bring you into these flag race mini games and essentially when you do the first course which is the small one or the short one it's going to give you radiant butter for completing it while doing the medium course and the long course when you complete them are going to give you milk so this is when milk and radiant butter becomes repeatable and easier to get as opposed to just going into caves or opening up chests. Now, milk is just one of those bonus ingredients that you can add to other smoothies to enhance them to be a lot better, while the butter is going to be used to help you glow in the dark. This is very useful if you need to illuminate areas while you're going deep underwater, which you can also use an echo to light up the area, and also in the Farron dungeon, which has certain sections that get really dark, so it's great to light up places. Now, let's talk about some of the RNG ingredients that drop in your game. You can find Electro Apples, grapes and floral nectar from just breaking these boxes or breaking pots inside of caves. And like I mentioned earlier, you can find some of these by enemy camps. You can spam them over again or inside of caves, which you can go inside of and they respawn in there and you can do it all over again. Now, electro apples are pretty much going to be used when creating smoothies to make things that protect you from being electrocuted, just making you thunderproof so you can deal with any enemies very easily. Grapes are going to be a very good early game material used for heart recovery. Floral nectar, also another accessory great for heart recovery now let's move on to bubble kelp bubble kelp is what helps you breathe underwater and you can get this by just breaking seaweed in the jabul area by this cave over here this is what i talked about in the cave spam method very good stuff to get bubble kelp here it's very quick and very efficient mangoes are going to be great for damage reduction and let's be honest getting hit by an enemy we would prefer to take less damage as opposed to losing more hearts these can be found from a mini game in the gerudo desert called mango rush that costs 10 rupees to play and if you do the first one and spin correctly and do everything right you'll get five mangoes at a time that's pretty good for making five smoothies next up are river horses which help you to get your swim speed faster and these can be found in random chests in the game as well as a constant reward from this specific acorn guy located here if you beat it under 25 seconds after the first time the first time you get 100 rupees but every time after that you'll get yourself a river horse rock salt is also an enhancement material and you're going to be getting that from rocks and a great spot to farm rock salt is going to be over here at this location by this cave in the Elden Volcano. You just come out this cave, you grab some of these rocks, smash them against other rocks and rock salt drops, you go in, come out, do it all over again and that's my rock salt farming spot. Now one of the most expensive ingredients that in the game if you try to sell them and most powerful ingredients that give you up to 20 heart recovery is going to be golden eggs. If you mix a golden egg with any of the main ingredients like a twisted pumpkin it's going to give you 20 20 hearts and a five minute timer. This applies to almost every single one with the respective effect and the 20 hearts. And if it's just an accessory ingredient, you'll just get yourself a golden smoothie. That's pretty much it. But these smoothies give you the highest hearts possible in the game. Now, I first just wanted to get potions out of the way because potions are going to be something that are really powerful because they give you a plus five minute boost of whatever effect you are going for in the game. So here's a list of them. Take a screen if you need to but let me tell you the really important ones i think you definitely need to make piping hot potion is going to be really important if you're visiting hebra mountain that have to deal with enemies that can freeze you well then you won't take any freezing effects after you pop this and you won't also be cold in the area this is going to be better than the other potion that keeps you warm just do this one you'll be fine and it's just made from a warm pepper and monster guts the next one is the chili potion is very good because in areas like out volcano where you catch on fire putting this chili potion on means you're not taking any fire from the octa rocks hitting you or by stepping on these really hot floor areas just like this where you usually will catch on fire the next one is going to be the electro potion which is made from these ingredients over here and i believe getting shocked might be one of the most annoying things in the game because you can't do anything so for example when you pop your electro potion and go up to these enemies here you don't get shocked anymore you just get pushed back a little so this is going to be very helpful. If you combine monster guts and a tough mango, you'll get a potion that gives you damage reduction guaranteed for five minutes. Just keep in mind that potions don't recover hearts, but give you a good long lasting effect. 
Now, the rest of the potions that I didn't talk about, minus the glow potion, are all going to pretty much share the same effect with some accessories that you can equip, which makes you a lot more overpowered. But I have an entire video about the accessories. Just know that when you stack things up with accessories and you got a potion running, Zelda moves a lot faster, swims a lot faster, and does a lot of crazy things. Now, let's talk about some early game smoothies that you must make. The first one is going to be the sweet, refreshing smoothie. This is just going to combine grapes and floral nectar because you know how easy it is to spam boxes and break them to get these two ingredients. And they'll be giving you 10 hearts, which is going to be very good when you're in a pinch. It's a lot of hearts. The next three are going to require you to get mangoes, which you know you're going to get from the mango rush area. First one is the sweet, tough smoothie, which is going to be combining the floral nectar with a mango. What this does is give you 15 hearts plus damage reduction for three minutes. Followed up by that, if you want full energy recovery, no hearts, but perfect full energy recovery, you can craft the salted tough smoothie, which is going to use a rock salt and a mango, and you get damage reduction for a minute. This one is great for money making, but it's going to be the mixed tough smoothie, which basically involves you getting a bunch of mangoes and then going to this area and doing a bubble kelp farm. And then when you combine them, you'll be able to sell each one for 50 rupees profit. It's a great way of selling and making money on smoothies. Now, let's talk about the mid-game recipes. Mid-game recipes take place once you're able to farm milk from the racetrack or the flag racing with the horse. And the first recipe is floral nectar plus fresh milk, which is going to give you 15 heart recovery and half a bar of energy. Extremely useful for getting back into sword fighter form or maintaining it while getting your hearts, especially if you're in a really heated battle. The next one is going to be a nice and easy one, which is going to be called the salted milk smoothie. You're just going to basically take a rock salt and go Going to take a milk combine that you'll be getting 10 hearts plus full energy this is a really good one to make i suggest making this because it's very very useful followed up by one that's very interesting which is the milky tough smoothie this smoothie believe it or not is going to recover 18 hearts which is the highest one in the game besides the golden smoothies this is going to just take a tough mango and milk and that's all it is plus you're also going to be getting damage reduction with this now here's some advanced tips if you use a potion with an effect first, this will initiate five minutes of that effect, followed up by smoothies that just allow you to have heart recovery and energy. That way the effect can run the entire time and you can just gain health and recovery without having to worry about anything else. If you want to take it a step further, I mentioned this previously, but you can combine accessories that function with the specific potion you're having, absolutely go to extreme levels of how you're doing a certain task with Zelda. But if you want to see which accessories do what specifically, you should click on the link on the screen right now, which will take you to my accessory video so you can actually figure out what potions you can combine with what accessories.